Okay, folks, we're getting close. Ten seconds. Yes, of luck. Can I get a jungle check? Five. Go to black. Four. Three. They're not dolls! You stink! Get off the stage! Your mother's an iguana! Hey, my mother's half iguana. I'm sorry. I meant no disrespect. You like hockey? Like hockey? This is a big important game. It's a big important game. Cut the crap. Cut the crap. I'm being serious, don't do that. I'm being serious, don't do that. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Yeah, that's what I thought. Shut up. Hey everybody, I'm the Loud House Critic, one guy with a thousand views and all the episodes I must review. So what did you guys think of my 200 episode? Was it good or is it really good? Now that we got the special 200 episode out of the way, it's time to move on to the next Loud House episode review, which meaning a Lynn Loud episode. And this one is pretty much ballsy as, as good as I can actually say about this episode. On Thin Ice, the 39th episode in season four and above all the 188th episode. You know, out of all the Lynn Loud episodes I've seen in season four, Good Sports actually still beats it all. Compared to this, and actually compared to another episode where Lynn was kind of at her worst. I love hockey, but I don't like how it was portrayed in this episode. In fact, that's not even what the fo main focus is. It's actually more on Lynn, who, once again, believes that bad luck is actually going to happen at a professional hockey match. It's weird. We keep this chain reaction of no such luck up. It's really going to put everybody in a wooden box. And to think that Lynn Loud was actually going to get it so much better after seeing good sports, somehow this went back to square one. But I'll add more detail into that criticism later. As of right now, at this moment, I actually have a new guest star on this show. Normally I'm not the kind of person who reads people's comments on my videos, but with this guy's comments, he made me laugh on my Kings of the Con review. And the more he actually comment on my reviews, the more I actually thought, maybe I could actually let him do one episode with me one day, but I just gotta find out what he's about and what's his hobby. One of them was hockey. And I say, let him actually guest star on this episode. Everybody, please welcome Michael Game Show. Hello everybody, I am Michael Gaming Show. Yes, Michael is my real name. My YouTube nickname is Penguin. I play a lot of Nintendo games such as Mario Kart, Mario Party, Super Smash Bros, and Mario Main games. Anyway, today's episode, I'm going to review, with the Loud House credit, one of my favorite childhood shows on Nickelodeon, The Loud House. So originally I wanted to review with him Lola, because she's my favorite character on the show. But then I realized he just ended Lola and Lana month not too long ago. 
So I decided to review this episode on Thin Ice. And no, it's not because I like Lynn. I can't stand Lynn. She's one of my least favorite sisters and characters on the show. It's because I love the sport of hockey. So today's video, you're going to hear me talk about a bunch of details about the sport of hockey. Oh, and before we begin, I would like to apologize. I have autism and I can't really pronounce certain things too well. So if I mispronounce things, I deeply apologize. There's nothing I can do about it. I will try my best, but I can't guarantee I'm going to 100% say the words correctly. Anyway, La House Critic. So what are we waiting for? Let's burn up the ice. Okay, what month does this takes place in? Playoff hockey usually takes place in April, but there's snow all over the place. Now, I do know that Michigan, it does snow, but does it snow in Michigan in April? Well, not necessarily, Mikey. It's just that the fact is, in Michigan, it rarely even snows in April, yet the temperature is still actually cold. It doesn't even snow in April much of the time. Of course, sure as hell right there, it actually did snow one time in March. And I hate wearing gloves around the time. My hockey tickets are here! Ooh, hockey angels. That's a hell yeah for me. Okay, some of these angelic angels, I don't know too much about them, but there is one reference of someone who I know who's actually a hockey mask serial killer. Is it even that hard to tell who that really is? Cause the is Friday. I'm not sure who the other two are, but somewhat, the other guy kind of reminds me of the fat Thor that we saw in Avengers Endgame. <laughs> Shoot, what's that kind of gesture? Are Morris code for oral sex? Jesus fucking Christ! Hey, fellas, you think what I'm thinking? Pretty fucking sure I am. Oh, you bet to hell not. Shaw, the international sign for scatter! Right, get out of here! <laughs> I don't know why, I just find it pretty funny how, how Lily actually runs like that, because how often do you see Lily actually run in this kind of manner? Guys, I got four tickets for the biggest game of the year, and you know the rule. Three of you have to come with me. It's good, good luck. luck. Exactly. Are they seriously talking about no such luck again? Because we all know how that episode turned out to be. Again, we, we don't, don't talk, talk about, about no, no such luck. luck. Our very own Royal Woods Jellyfish are playing the New Jersey Gabagools. I'm especially good at expectorating. <laughs> Ew, young lady, clean that up. Don't spit in the house. If you're gonna spit, spit in the fucking sink for once. And I'm pretty sure they found a little loophole with a SpongeBob to put into this show, especially when it comes to jellyfish. I know for copyright reasons, they're not allowed to use real NHL teams. So I'm just going to tell you guys, what are they talking about? So they are talking about the Detroit Red Wings because they live in Michigan and the New Jersey Devils. And a win tonight puts them in the playoffs for the first time in my life. I know they're talking about Royal Woods, but I still like to keep things realistic as possible. So the Detroit Red Wings, they actually made the playoffs 26 times from 1990 all the way till 2016 when the show first started airing. So technically Lynn is wrong because Detroit has made the playoffs for many times for many years and they collapsed in 2017 and they went on to a full rebuild and they're still doing to this day. And they haven't made the playoffs since 2016. Rowdy McQuad needs this. Who's that? Some hockey guy? A hockey legend? He's the GOAT! 
Uh, 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 uh,
Okay, lucky playoff beards are locked and loaded. Okay, this is getting way too fucking and being embarrassed, man. Especially when they're wearing beards. And somewhat, I don't even like looking at a bearded lady. I swear, this girl hasn't even learned anything from no such luck. She believes every single piece of shit of good luck is actually gonna help her out win every single fucking game. As bad as John Wilkes boot actually killing one of my favorite presidents thinking it will bring everybody's good luck. Playoff beers are actually a real thing. No, seriously, they are a real thing. Let's just get to the hockey game before I blew my stack. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we are out at the Elite Deluxe Sports Palace about to witness one of the biggest ice hockey games of the season. Bringing together two of the top ranking teams in the league. What's up, my tentacle troopers? How are you going to do me dirty like that on game day, Fern? <laughs> Whoa, shit! She's a zombie. She's a fucking zombie. <laughs> and how the way Lynn just actually talked to her, it feels like these two might be against one another. Stern Fern. She's the most feared usher in the league. One time, she kicked out the mascot for sneezing too loud. Survey says... <laughs> <laughs> That's a bullshit way to actually kick somebody out for doing that. Kicking out the mascot for sneezing too loud? Like, really? The mascot's supposed to be cheering on the team. You should be fired for that. You should be fired for that. As bad as Lynn Sr. actually making Lou and Loud actually walk home from school. Fern takes this hockey stuff way too seriously. I suppose she acts like two average YouTubers, and one of them actually quit reviewing the Loud House episodes, and the other one hated the movie Turning Red. Damn, I take hockey way too seriously too sometimes. And trust me, you'll know when I watch it with you. Especially when the LA Kings are playing. Lou Ann, no! You can't sit like that! Pretzel style only on game days. It's good luck. You two pops, crisscross applesauce. <laughs> if I'd known, I would have done some pre-game stretches. Looks like this pretzel's a little salty. <laughs> is it too late for me to have a vagina? What the hell is this crap? Why are there bleachers in this stadium? Most professional stadiums are individual seats, not bleachers. So, that means the seats are divided, not one wooden seat. Hot dogs, funnel cakes! Get your hot dogs and funnel cakes! Ah, the reason I'm here! Yeah, Lincoln and I think so much alike. Like somehow, both of us are here at some stadium games for a real reason, especially for the food. But myself, I'm actually for both the food and the actual games, especially when I'm watching baseball. I don't know if this is just me, but I feel like that's a reskin of Coach Pafowski. I could be wrong, but that's just me. I stop! You can't order food from him. He's a mush. Bad luck! You know what actually helped me out with good luck? On thinking that everything is bad luck to win a game. Hey, Vicky! Let me get two porksters and a couple of doughboys. Goofy foot style! That's your standard hot dog with powdered sugar and funnel cake with mustard. It's good luck for the team. Oh, oh, oh. Survey says... Word to the Kraken. Fuck this. Hell no, I'm out of here. I'm not watching another hockey game with you anymore. I'd rather be having sugar on my frosted flakes. Having a hot dog with powdered sugar and a funnel cake? Um, okay. I have a sensitive stomach, so I'm probably going to throw up. Sorry, folks. A hush of expectancy settles over the crowd as the teams line up for the faceoff. The referee drops the puck, and the game is on! Crappy McQuad is on a breakaway! He puts the biscuit in the basket! See, uh, I told you these were lucky! Uh, ah, 
Chase like luck. Check by the opposing left wing who passes the puck back to the right defense, cutting in fast, picking the puck off the board, now back to the left wing and pivots around the center. They're just scramble for possession. Boots has got it. He's down the ice, tries for a shot off the net, but the goalie puts up a stout defense. Okay, second period is starting. Time to change. Uh, no. Second period will start in 18 minutes. Change? Yeah! I have a first period jersey, a second period jersey, and a third period jersey. Now get in! Ah! Yeah, and where's your fourth period? Is it dude May? Man, she's gonna need a lot of pads before that day even comes. Or has that already happened before since Space Invaders? And that should have been a penalty for goaltender interference. I'm redoing the score here. It should have been Remay tied 1-1, one to one, not 2-1, to one, Detroit. Jordan loose to down the rink. It's taken by McCormick. McCormick to Papano at the blue line. Over to Murray. Murray cutting over the loose leafy fence. He tries to draw the goalie out of position. There's a shot. And, 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 and. Good work, bro. What did I have to do with that goal? Team effort. The more people in this jersey, the better the luck. What? Hey. So, this is cozy? <laughs> ah! oh! Oh! Ah! Well, at least they weren't under the sweater, or because that would have been even worse. Puck shoots out the center ice. Both teams are battling furiously for possession. Here come Bertino and Ferguson out of the penalty box. <laughs> There go Bertino and Ferguson back into the penalty box. And the typically classy steal by two. Three, two, one, now. Oh, Tanya catches the Gohawks right defenseman by surprise. The loose leaves take the play away. Kyle takes the pass on the right wing. Right side right to old. Riley snags the puck and a beautiful poke check at the end. There's a long pass ring wide and a scramble for the puck. A little rough play out there. Both sides are trying to score. Come one with the boards. He shoots. He scores. You coward. How are you even in the National Hockey League? You literally just dove out of the way and let the puck in? What? You should have been benched for that. Also, why did the puck went through the net? Like, literally rip it in half? Like, seriously? That does not happen. Oh, no. Lucy! I'm home! Oh, guys, he scores! Huh? I knew the lucky hats would get us back on track! It's a lice outbreak! Send the hats, kids! It's not lice, it's a hat trick. When a player scores three goals, fans throw their hats on the ice. Play went from a Wolverine to a spark. Use the hat burn. <laughs> now, you know, a little uh, primatine might just help to clear that up. You're the only one who still has one on and we're so close to a win! Two things. One, Firm is clearly on duty and not allowed to take off the hat. If she does, she'll probably get fired. And two, most hockey securities do not wear hats. Is that right? Oh, look at your hair. Oh, what happened? You saw yourself in a mirror? <laughs> That's it! You're out of here! <laughs> Sounds like some losers getting the old boot from the arena. <laughs> and that's your sister. You know, I never thought I would have the balls to say this, but Lynn Senior can be such a big douche bag in times. But I don't think he's the worst father out there. I think that actually belongs to Timmy Turner's father. How do you think his wife would have reacted if she heard him say that stupid shit like that? <laughs> Hold tight, LJ! We're coming for you! No! I'll be fine! You all have to stay here and keep my good luck rituals going! I'm sorry, I couldn't take that shit anymore of her bringing up good luck every single fucking time. And I swear in the future, if I ever hear somebody in this show taking after Lynn Loud about good luck, I'm gonna throw sugar cookies at somebody. Catch your peeping face around here again. Got it? Booga booga. Damn, go 
gorilla terror. Got kicked out, loud? Yeah, you too? Yep, somebody sold me a bum ticket. Flip is a cheap bastard, like Mr. Krabs. Of course, this came from Flip. Why do I not feel too fucking surprised about that? I swear, somebody in that studio needs to teach that fat fuck a lesson. If not, I'm gonna have to write a petition about it. And Jersey ties the game! Oh. Come on, jellyfish, you can't play dump and chase hockey! This is all happening because I'm not inside doing my rituals! Three to two, so that means New Jersey takes the lead. I'm pretty sure they're not losing because you're stupid rituals, Lynn, but whatever. Do you. I gotta get back in there or the jellies are history! There's more than one way to skin a cat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in! Hey! I thought I kicked you out! Bird, we meet again. Wait, wait a second, I always wanted to try this. So, we meet again, Lin Loud, for the last time. Not today, Zerg! I'm glad we're okay. Nobody gives him the slip like old Flip. Jelly jelly, a jelly jelly jelly. Stop, seriously, you're embarrassing yourself. Is he doing the jellyfish song? SpongeBob and Patrick, bring it on. I find this scene hilarious for some reason. I don't know why. Come on, Lynn Senior, do the wiggle. Hey, down in front. <laughs> um, guys, Lynn's back. What the fuck? <gasps> Oh, that was a nice callback to a certain Lola Loud episode. Okay, there should be nobody on the ice while the Samboni's in motion. Because even the Sambo doesn't go very fast, it's still dangerous. Check it out! This fan moves like a penguin! Give it up for the penguin! Shit with Lynn that she did out there? I wish I could do some cool shit like that. Now, there was one time I was on ice skate rink, and there was that time I never wore any skates because, I'm sorry, it's Snoopy that made me do it ever since he did it in the Christmas special. Now I gotcha, you little sh stain. Settle in! I have a feeling it's gonna take me extra long to find one of your parents. 
<laughs> I will sue you. I will sue you and I will own you. You know, it's sad to say that it sucks to be Lin Lao Jr. in this kind of scenario. Ever since this happened to Lincoln and Clyde, though, because of a hobo rat actually ratted them out. And yet Luna actually gets tossed in jail for pretending to be their mom. But if it hadn't been for her, we would not have got a super episode about her. So, what are you in for? Slip? Yeah, that's the name. Don't wear it out. Whoa, that's the first time for everything. They finally got his ass in jail. They should have sent him to prison. Then again, he deserves to go there again. If anyone remembers net gains. And all I can say to you is, don't drop the soap. Such, so what's he in here for this time? I got busted for selling inauthentic game tickets. Well, suck my dick, love a ducker. I was right. Good thing Flip's in jail because that's what he deserves for selling fake tickets. Well, I'm in here for no good reason. Unless you count being the most committed tentacle trooper in the whole arena. Ugh! Yeah! <laughs> Did the jellyfish score? Nope! New Jersey just went up by a goal with one minute left. Gabagoo! Good God! I swear, with that voice of her, it sounds like she's a relative on Scoot's side of the family. And also, the Gabagool? I swear, I actually heard this nickname from somewhere, like from either the Sopranos, I don't know. Then again, hearing Gabagool kind of reminds me of a Total Drama episode where Izzy was speaking in tongue going, Gabagibble, 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 Gabagibble. Not sure what that episode was. Hope your team's better at playing golf than they are at hockey, because they're about to be on vacation. <laughs> You motherfucker! When I get out of this, well, I'm gonna rip your head off! Another true hockey story. Players actually golf when they're eliminated or don't make the playoffs. Would you look at that? I didn't know it was Hobo's Golf Free Day. This is all my fault! The jellyfish are gonna lose because I can't be out there doing my rituals! Uh, any interest in buying an authentic get out of jail free card? No, thank you. I stopped playing Monopoly 12 years ago. That game gets so much fun, but then again, it gets boring pretty quick when you play it so many times. It's like the world's longest playing game ever. Like, it almost takes forever for you to try and finish it. Now that we come outside of the arena, as Lou starts to lose her freaking temper, which I hope she doesn't end up sucking her thumb. Not the time, Dad. You know I need a full 24-hour cooling off period after losses. But, but, but honey... Look. No offense, but I don't want to talk about the game at all. I'll tell you what you shouldn't be talking about. Do I even need to bring it up again, as I already did before in this review? Hey, it's the penguin. <gasps> hey, who the hell said that? Wait, were you talking to me? You talking to me? Are you talking to me? Yeah, I can talk to animals. It's a long story. Oh, we've been calling you the penguin in the locker room. I've never seen anyone move like that on the ice. And I would know, I'm... Rowdy McQuads, the Michigan maniac! Record holder for most goals and most penalty minutes in a single pro season! Hockey Hotshot Magazine called you a grinder with a heart of gold who enjoys snowmobiling, hiking, and crocheting in his free time! Woo! Woo, that isn't saying too much. And I thought every girl down in California actually fell in love with Jonathan Taylor Thomas during the mid-90s. <laughs> Look, Rowdy, I owe you a big time apology. When I was doing all my game day rituals, the jellyfish were winning. Then I got kicked out of the arena and you guys lost. But we didn't lose. We won. What? How? I wasn't there to do my good luck stuff. Shit. Lynn's not going to get better in any future episodes, isn't she? Tell me I'm right. We athletes are a strange breed with our superstitions. I've worn the same pair of underwear every game since college. Actually, I'm wearing them right now. <laughs> That's gross. You've been wearing the same underwear since college? How are you not affected by the bacteria in that area? God damn! But the more you play the game, the more you realize that <laughs> no comment. aren't predictable. Honestly, it's the unpredictability that makes playing the game fun. Well, he's not wrong. Sports unpredictability is what makes it fun. Like seriously, Mario Kart is so overrated because it's so predictable. I don't like playing Mario Kart with people. I prefer playing Mario Party with people. At least that game is unpredictable every time. Hey, you think I could get a pick? The guys in the locker room aren't going to believe I met the penguin. Sure. 
You know, every time when I hear the word penguin, it kind of reminds me of this hockey team called the Pittsburgh Penguin. I'm too sure my mother's actually addicted to that team as well as she is addicted with Pittsburgh Steelers in football. And let me tell you, I have to be out of the house every time when the Steelers play on television. I don't understand why pitchers come out looking like that freaky ugly. When in selfie improvement, Lloyd's pictures came out nicely and they look exactly how the way she actually is drawn in the episode. Wow, honey, what a day. Your team made the playoffs and you got to meet your hero. Really? Why are you happy with Lynn? She literally interrupted the game by literally on the eyes while the sandboat is in motion. You should not be happy. You should be pissed off. Now, I don't know how sports work in Europe or Asia, but here in the United States, if you on the field at any time, you will be arrested and be kicked out of the stadium for real. You know, I think he taught us all a little something too. Yeah, if you're famous, you can wear the same underwear whenever you want. But I do it two days in a row and I'm a weirdo. Okay, that shit I did not need to fucking hear. As bad as that line delivery you said and not allowed that that story had more holes in my underwear, which I didn't need to fucking hear also. I wouldn't have called you a weirdo, Lincoln, just more of a coward and a jerk. Excuse me? What, am I seriously the only person that thinks so? Because especially what he does nowadays, season 5, season 6, especially in Rini was rude and, uh, taunting hour. Many of you guys are right. From now on, I won't be superstitious. Wear hockey games yeah, on Fridays after 2 p.m. in the month of March. Ay vey. God help me if I dare to ever live to see another good Loud House episode and not watch another abomination that really wants to bite me in the ass. Or maybe worse, my hockey pucks. So, uh, we're not gonna talk about how Lynn got away with that, all of that, scot free? What is with people getting away with things scot-free nowadays? It's seriously sad. This reminds me of the time where a student from my high school literally threatened to kill someone with a goddamn machete, and the school went to lockdown, but they didn't notify us. And guess what happened? They found out that he did not have a machete, and guess what they do with him? Absolutely nothing. He got away with things scot-free. God damn it, school. Is my school seriously that dumb? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> no wonder why I left that school. Oh boy, I still have one year left of high school. Guys, please wish me luck. So that was On Thin Ice. I don't know what to say about this episode and why they brought Lynn back to square one when they were doing so well with her in season four. But I guess it's some people's way of how they're used to Lynn Loud being that way. But in my case, no. I would have loved to see how she would have gotten so much better like she did in good sports. And by the way, that was a good call back when she met up with Mr. Grouse in the end. And yet she had a real good moral in Leonard Takes All and that they flannerize on this character of being obnoxious and superstitious. I really don't like this episode, but somewhat, it's not the worst Lin Loud episode out there. But this was a lot of missed opportunities, and this would have been so much better. Because somewhat, I was expecting her to actually play hockey and not do any of these superstitious ritual bullshit with her family to make them feel so dumb and embarrassing. And there were a lot of things that made me cringe, especially with the hot dog shit. I would have loved it if she was actually playing on a hockey team that would have had the similar voice cast to Disney Afternoon Show of the Mighty Ducks actually voicing the hockey players. Lynn would actually teach them how to have fun, but somewhat, someone on that team does not like how the way she's actually helping the team out. And then later on tries to sabotage her and one of the team members actually gets hurt and yet somewhat they had to use Lynn to actually help fill in the gap. But nope, they had to make this a huge letdown. I don't know how else to put it this way, it just sucks. It, you could just skip it. You could just try to check this episode out once and trust me, you wish you'd never go back to watching this episode again. I wish they didn't waste too much of Lynn Loud in this episode. I wish I could actually just see her play hockey instead of her just sitting in the crowd and making her family look like total idiots like she was in this episode. And partly in the ending, it almost made me barf too. Hell, in Disney's Big Hero 6, that joke actually worked out because it's Fred. 
And yeah, that kind of made me gag too, but in a funny way. All right, Michael, it's your turn to see what's your take on Thin Ice. Wow. This episode is somehow worse than I remembered. Like, okay, when I first watched this episode back when it first came out in 2020, I thought it was okay. This was around the time where I quit the show because the writing sucked after King of the Kongs, but then I came back because School was coming out at that time, and we all know how School came out to be. When I rewatched this episode for this review with the Loud House Critic, I was like, what the hell is this bullcrap? This is bullcrap! I think my main reason I hate this episode is because of Lynn. Lynn was an unlikable jerk like she has been since season 1. And you know, that's kind of sad because I really have high hopes for Lynn this season. Because she was really likable in good sports and single out, which was okay in my opinion. But once this episode came out, yeah, that is not good. I thought maybe it was just a fluke. So once school came out, I was like, okay, she was back to square one. I'm not liking her ever again. And you know, between her and Lincoln, especially in the recent seasons, have shown me that their relationship does not work at all. And I don't like it. I prefer Lincoln with his little sisters, Lola, Lana, Lucy, and Lily, and Lori even though that's his older sister. Do you want to know what this ending reminds me of? It reminds me of Don't You Forget About Me when Lenny sabotaged Lori's college and somehow she got away with it scot-free, even though Lori should have been pissed off about it and should have scolded her for what she has done. And yep, she get no punishment at all. And I thought Lenny was the most overrated Loud House sister of all time. Oh wait, that's right, she is. The only episode I like from Lenny is Driving Miss Hazy. Yeah, that's it. Otherwise, her episodes are either forgettable or frustrating to me. Family Bond, even though I know this episode came out before Family Bond, and I already did explain it why I didn't like that episode and compared to this episode, so I'm not gonna say much. And frame on you, when girl Jordan should have been punished and should have been suspended for what she has done for framing Rusty. Like, I'm sorry, but I'm still pissed off she got away with things scot free. Like, I hate it when people do that. It's just so annoying, especially nowadays. Also, I have one question about this hockey player. And I can't pronounce his name, so sorry about that. Is this guy supposed to reference anyone? To me, it looks like they're trying to make him look like he's Wayne Gretzky. But if you look at Wayne Gretzky's career, he did not play for the Detroit Red Wings. So that's a lie. If you look at Wayne Gretzky's career, he played for the Edmonton Oilers, my hometown Los Angeles Kings, St. Louis Blues, and he's finished up his career with the New York Rangers. So they should have have a legend star from Detroit, like Gordy Howe, Steve Eiserman, Pavel Daxiud, Henrik Sunderberg, I don't know, but something that is not Wayne Gretzky. The other characters didn't really do much for me. They were all just kind of there. I was honestly expecting this to be a really good episode and a lot of reference of, of the sport of hockey. But no, they got the wrong information, terrible writing, and unrealistic events about the sport of hockey. Maybe with this more realistic hockey, I would probably liked it more, but no, it wasn't. Even in school, they got hockey wrong. I really want there to be another hockey episode of the show, but I honestly doubt it. And please, if they do do it, don't do it with Lynn. Do it with like Lincoln, Lola, or Lana. I don't know. But then again, they're probably going to do it with Lynn because she's the only sports girl in the show. Anyway, thank you, La House Critic, for having me guest star for this episode. I hope next time, if I do guest star again, I hope I can do Lola. Lana or Lori episodes instead of this train wreck. Before I go, I also forgot to say this in my intro, but I am a Native American. Yes, it is weird that a white boy is a Native American, but it's true. I am a Native American. I do have Native blood. Anyway, I got to go and play some video games and watch my favorite hockey team, the LA Kings, win the Stanley Cup next year. Anyways, thank you, Lighthouse Crit, and I am going home. So long, everyone, and have a great day. All right, Michael, I can actually see that.
And about that hockey player, Michael, this may actually come as a shock to you. That hockey player is actually voiced by one of the best professional hockey player forward. And he did play for the Los Angeles Kings. And this hockey player is Kyle Clifford. You know, it's a good thing I actually brought you onto the show because me being the Loud House critic, and I loved how the way you actually helped out review this episode and seeing how you had a lot of good intentions. And there was a lot of good pointers I read in the comments section from you. And I'm really super grateful of what you had to offer in this review. And with that being said, I now make and welcome you as a Loud House critic guest member of the Loud House critic group. Welcome aboard to the club, Michael Games Show. Now then, it's time to get out of here. This has been the Loud House Critic. Now that I think about hockey, I think I'm actually going to watch that cartoon show of the Mighty Ducks again. Me time, a little room to breathe time, a little quiet and peace I've never had. It's easy for you to say. You don't have to deal with it. You just go around ruining lives. What a life ruiner. Ruiner. Fuck you! Fuck you and fuck you!